the, the videos or testimonies we put out on the channel, the ones who are able to come on the show and then show what they've done are the ones that were disciplined. Hi, I'm Chris James. Today we're gonna be diving into why you should put discipline over motivation. And this is in reference to your wellness journey, okay? A lot of times when I'm working with people, they'll say things like, I'm not motivated, or I just need some motivation. And the focus is always on motivation. Now, I've been around for, for a few years, and I've noticed that whenever the, there is a mass of people with a particular ideology, it typically is not the right way to go. You know, the, the idea of following the crowd isn't usually gonna give you like outstanding results. So I started noticing this trend that the crowd would lean towards motivation, especially when it comes to like losing weight or maintaining a specific diet or anything like that. It was like motivation was like a main component for them. It, it, motivation is like a spark plug. But I just wanted to take a deeper dive into this because I, 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 I need you guys to understand this thing with motivation. So I wanted to break down this definition when we look at motivation, because it makes sense why we all are focused on motivation, but it doesn't make sense when, when you think about like the big picture and the outcomes you wanna achieve. Motivation is the reason or reasons one has for acting or behaving in a particular way. Now let's look at this from a different perspective. Let's say that a scenario happened where you punch somebody in the face, right? You, you know. This is after this is the aftermath now. We're we're looking back on a scenario. You punch somebody in the face. And someone might say, "Well, what was your reason? Why'd you do that?" You know, what was your motivation for doing that? And you might say, "Oh, they said something about my mama, right?" So you were triggered essentially. Now, in other aspects of life, when it comes to being responsible, you know, carrying yourself a certain way, we understand that it's not good to act on emotion. So in this scenario, even in retrospect, you could probably agree it might not have been good for you to end, like punch someone because they said something about your mom. Maybe, I guess it depends. But I think if we take if we take the feeling or emotion out of it, or we take the motivation out of it, then we can kind of see where we may have made a mistake there. You know. Now we know we don't need to allow um, our feelings to drive us that way. We were motivated to do that because someone said something. And that's not really the way you should act as an adult. On the other side of the coin, we have discipline. Discipline is to train oneself to do something in a controlled or habitual way. So let's take that same scenario. Someone says something about your mama, but you are disciplined, which means you have trained yourself to not be explosive or reactive to words, things of that nature. You have, you have trained yourself self to be stoic. So if you leaned on your discipline in this scenario, you don't punch the individual, right? And that's kind of the, the, the contrast between motivation and discipline. Now I wanna apply that to the wellness journey. And this is what I see all of the time. Person is obese or person has a dis-ease. Person maybe sees something, someone reversing that same issue, or someone um, giving information that is convincing enough to get that person to say, huh, I think that might work. And so now they are motivated. They want to make a change based on this feeling, this emotion that they have, this spark that they got from this content or this person or whatever, and they go out and they start working towards that goal, right? The problem with motivation is there is no regimen there. You're just, you're just, you know, you're just going out and you're just doing something. You, you're feeling something and you're acting on your feelings. And that is great to get you started. That is, it's a spark plug. I think that, I don't think motivation should be discounted. But the reality is, when you, look, when you look at successful people, when you study people who are highly successful, and I've talked about this before, their achievements, it's like less than 1% of what they have achieved was based off of motivation. Highly successful people are not motivated 
all the time. It's literally just a spark. That's it. It's inception. In order to become highly successful, to outpace everyone around you, you need discipline. You need to train yourself to do something in a controlled, habitual way. That's what's going to give you guys the outcomes that you're looking for. That's what's going to take you to the next level. That, like, This is the reason why you have people who are on this wellness hamster wheel, you know, and they're just running in place. Boop, boop. They're putting a lot of energy. Boop, boop, boop. Now they're galloping like a horse. Boop, boop, boop. And they're not making it anywhere. You lose 50 pounds. Wow. Good. Congratulations. You gained 60. Ooh, that doesn't feel too good. That hit really hard. You lose 50 pounds again. Hey, look at you. You did it again. You gained back 70. Uh-oh. We are not moving in the right direction. You are putting all of this energy and effort into something that's not yielding you the result because you have not taken the time to invest in being disciplined. And see, discipline is not fun. Discipline is not flashy. Discipline is not anything you're going to brag to your friends about. And discipline doesn't feel like you're really going to get anywhere. When you're investing a whole bunch of energy and time into being disciplined, it doesn't feel as good. Because it's not a feeling. It is a controlled and habitual thing. You do the same thing. It's monotonous is what it is. But being disciplined is what's going to actually get you to the outcomes that you desire. And so as we are pursuing these different goals in our wellness journey, we need to have discipline on the forefront of our mind because if, we are, if we're focused on motivation, motivation is fleeting. Today you're motivated, tomorrow you're not. That's how motivation works. Or today you feel good, you're motivated, tomorrow you don't feel good, you're not. That's motivation. You know, you do not want to build your wellness journey, your wellness walk, on motivation. You're building it on a house of sand. You do not want to build your wellness journey on motivation. You're building it on a foundation of sand. It is the guise of a foundation. You cannot use motivation as your foundation for your wellness journey. And that is the message that I want you guys to understand today. You have to, you have to use something, you have to use something more solid, something more stable. You know, when I was younger, I had a friend, he was my best friend at the time, and I believe his mom or somebody in his family um, was like a weather person. And, you know, he was telling me one time, like, yeah, you know, when, when the snow gets real big, when snowflakes get real big, that means the snow is about to end. Motivation is big, it's flashy, it's in your face. Oh my God, look at this, ah, it's ah inspiring. It's a big snowflake. You're going to burn that thing out. You know, whatever it is that you're doing, whatever, whatever you are depending on motivation for, you're going to burn yourself out. Stars, what, so they say, they say stars, before a star burns out, it grows very bright. It gives off this brilliant light, unlike what it did prior. It is the flashy ending. We are building our wellness journey. The, the beginning of our wellness journey, we're building it on the flashy ending. It is a problem, a systemic problem. Life has leaned us towards this flashy, you, you, want, you want everything right now, this credit card, microwave energy. It's like, you don't want to take the time to sit and prepare a meal and, and you know, go grocery shopping, cut up the vegetables, season it, oh, it's a little bit, no, I, I want to add a little bit more season and put it in the oven for 45 minutes. You don't want that. You want to go to the store, get the frozen dinner, pop it in a microwave, you're done in three minutes. And that is the, that is the, this is how we approach things as a, as a culture. It's a culture. Most of us, especially those of us who are probably 30 or older, we know that a home-cooked meal where time, energy, and love has been put into that food is always going to be better than the, you know, the, the frozen dinner. It's just not comparable. They're two different products, okay? However, 
We like the convenience of that frozen dinner. We are, we are, we are way too familiar and way too quick to go and grab that frozen dinner. We need to get back to the process of picking out your food, inspecting each vegetable, right? Going through, thumbing through the cookbook and figuring out what the recipe is going to be. Chopping the vegetables up, seasoning it, tasting it, seasoning it, tasting it, getting that food to perfection and cooking it, slow cooking it. We need to take that approach to our wellness journey because that's what's going to get us the ultimate result that we want. You know the, whole, the old saying, you get out what you put in. So if we approach our wellness journey like a frozen dinner and it takes us three minutes to make it, it's going to last for three minutes. I mean, that's just, that's just the reality of it. What's the other old saying? People tend to not be good stewards over things that they did not invest in. When something is given to you, it doesn't have the same value for something that you worked hard for. I, it's just one of those things about human beings. It takes a very enlightened person, I would say, to be able to value something that they didn't work hard for. And most of us aren't at that level. So we have to assume that in order to value what it is that we have, we need to work hard for it, right? This, there are patterns that we can see. Like life is not so unique and random that we can't see patterns. As a matter of fact, I would argue that life is not random at all. I would argue that everything has a place and a time and a reason. I would argue that the randomness that they try to instill in us is a trick. It's a trick to make it feel as though you have less control than what you do. You all are, are completely in control of where you are today. Remember, you are the sum total of the decisions you've made up until this moment. You are not here by happenstance. It is not random. This is not magic why you are where you are right now. It is the sum total of the decisions you've made up until this point. So if you're not happy with where you are in life, that means something has to change. But also, you need to understand what are the habits that you have developed to get you here as well? Who are the people that you spend the t your most of your time with who are influencing how you think and how you maneuver this life? If you have this mentality that you need to be motivated to do something, maybe it's time for a change. And this could go for anything. You know, we see this often with the gym. People say it's, it's a common phrase. I, I'm motivated to go to the gym right now. I'm not motivated to go to the gym right now. It's not about whether or not you're motivated to do something. You need to be disciplined. It doesn't matter. And a lot of us didn't get disciplined as children. And that goes off into a whole nother topic, you know, about community. And so because we weren't disciplined as children, we don't discipline our children. We don't discipline ourselves. It's not a concept we're very familiar with. And that's a problem. Discipline needs to come back into our reality. It needs to be a part of our communities. And it definitely needs to be a part of our wellness journey. You know, we have to learn how to use tools that we all are aware of. It's not like we're not, we don't know what discipline is, but depending on the generation that you were raised in, you may have been taught that discipline was a control mechanism. And so discipline has a negative connotation in your mind. And now you wonder why you can't, you can't complete your wellness goal because you, 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 you've disassociated yourself with the tools you need to get there. Discipline is one of the greatest tools that you have at your disposal. I'm not saying that motivation isn't a benefit. It is. It definitely is. Don't get me wrong. But for those people who were able to be motivated by maybe some of the, the content or the, the videos or testimonies we put out on the channel, the ones who are able to come on the show and then show what they've done are the ones that were disciplined. You got to add that to the equation and it needs to be at the forefront. You got to learn what discipline is, how to implement it. Because at the end of the day, if you are just motivated all the time, and that's what controls you, this, this feeling of motivation, you're never going to get to the outcomes you want. And that's my fear, you know?
I want you all to be successful. I want to make sure that you're getting the outcomes that you desire. Your, your success is my success. And then I can share that success with a greater population of people who can then be motivated to instill discipline in themselves and their regimen and they can get success and it'll be this beautiful perpetual cycle. If you guys like this content, hit the thumbs up button. If you wanna see more like this, subscribe. And as always, the application of knowledge is power. I'll see you guys next time.